Schmidt, please travel to, what is the name again, uh, Nieder Wolpershofen right away. I have no idea where exactly that is. Somewhere in the middle of nowhere, I guess. Transport and accommodation have been arranged for you already. You will stay in at the pub, which is near the church somewhere. In these villages, in the end, everything is close to the church. Find the church and you will find the rest as well. Anyway, Mr. Griesbacher, the mayor there, is informed. Your task in the village is merely to complete your colleagues' reports. So to be clear, you collect information on the living conditions, wishes and complaints of the village people. Meaning you basically walk around, asking people about their living situation, write it down and report it. I would advise you not to show your face in the city before you found out every detail about the people in that place. And I don't want to hear a single complaint, Schmidt. Signed, Holler. You can say that again. Home. Oh, it's no better there. I'd rather stay outside. Here you can always discover things that you can't explain. Just now, for example, I saw a bird pull out a worm from the ground at Sebastian's farm. And do you know what I thought? Now I'm curious to hear what you have to say. So, something like that. Why it has now hit this particular worm? Who decides that? I wonder if I will ever get a good answer to that. Somehow, I am also afraid of it. But would you also like to collect some mushrooms for me? There are people here who say that they have secret powers. The mushrooms, not the people. I think 10 mushrooms are a good start. Oh, and listen. If you see my father, please don't tell him that I'm here. I don't want to get slapped again. It's quite simple. You just have to roll a higher value than the difficulty. But just go ahead and try it. I will explain everything else in the game. There you go! But if you have a lower score, you can compensate. Just use the appropriate skill. If you run out of skill points, then you have... Well, lost. Who could that be, for Christ's sake? Do you think that's him? How do you know all of a sudden? Have you ever seen him before, that guy Pascolini? Does he come to your place to play cards or what? 
Better once too careful than once too reckless. Nah, I prefer dice to cards. I always have my dice with me. Stop it with your stupid dice. You're always nagging me about it. Do you want to get on his nerves too? I would always roll the dice with anyone. Would you like to play around? Don't worry, the rules are really easy. Enough of this nonsense! We are on duty here! What do you want here anyway? No! We can't do that now! No one gets in or out of here! Not even you! This is an order from Mayor Griesbacher! Are hearing problems common in the city? We can't let you in! Come back another time! There's nothing we can do about it now! Uh, Bertel? He says he's not a robber at all! You be quiet now! What kind of normal person creeps around in the forest like that? We don't know anything about him. He just comes strolling along. Neither of us know him, and that's why he won't get in. And we don't play dice anymore either. Just a thought, but what if he's really from the government? Even if, I don't bloody care. Let me see what you got. With a very strong diversionary maneuver. And then sneak past. You should find out if there is anything that you can use to distract the guards. Go there and see if you can eavesdrop on the guards. Secretly, of course. There's a way in over there. I also have a key for the gate. The miller must have left it in the door, so I took it. He was just unlucky, but you are lucky. At the end of the path you come to a barn by the bridge. There is, for example, a great bush to hide in and eavesdrop on the guards. Come back when you've achieved something. Good luck. I think that the Pascolini gang is really hiding in the forest. You think they moved from Dachauer Moos all the way to Wolpertshofen? There's nothing to get here, is there? Well, you know those shady bandits. They'll cut your throat for a penny. Don Isel told me that Pascolini once cut off a man's head with a can simply because he was standing in his way. Doesn't matter. I still don't want to get caught by Pascolini. Yes, 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 you are right. They are better things than getting a beating from some crooks. See what you got? Great! Real splendid Schwammerl! And do you know what the best thing is? Schwammerl are so... I don't know. When I eat Schwammerl, I always feel better right away. Why don't you try it later? 
And what you should also try is the mushroom ragu from Kati in the Inn. It's delicious, I tell you. You will be amazed. Oh yes, the Pascolinis. That gang puts brown stains in the pants of some in this town. You know what I mean. <laughs> I also remember that I recently found a piece of paper with Pascolini on it. It's still here somewhere. I'm sure there's some information on it that we can use. But I'm not sure where it is anymore. Please take a look around. But look very carefully. Do you understand? Very carefully. The last time I saw it, I was standing over there by the barrel. That's all I remember. Stand over there. Maybe you'll be lucky and find it. If you find it, please bring it to me. As a small thank you, I will give you free pretzels. They're delicious and will certainly help with the search. It should be here somewhere. Pay attention to colors and no... Great! There is the wanted poster. Yeah, great. Then take a look at the note. I'm sure that we can find something we can use to drive the guards away. Sometimes I follow the lines with my finger. That helps me. There was something, wasn't it? Perfect. I have an idea right away. I could pretend to the guards that the Pascolinis want to ambush them. Then they'll probably run away and you can sneak into the village without being seen. But you'll have to bring me a few things. I think I can manage with a few sticks. Four sticks would be good. That's not so easy. I need nice sticks. They have to withstand something. Not windy twigs. I'm sure you will find some good wood at the mill. Of course, you have to be careful that the guards don't catch you. The gate is broken, but if you kick it probably once in the middle at the bottom, it opens. Down by the water, a path leads along, where many bushes grow with beautiful blossoms. It's a great place to hide. There are guys wandering around everywhere. One of them is a real tough dog. He'll knock you back into town with one fell swoop. I'm curious to see how you'll do. Or if. <laughs> Don't you have any pretzels? Then eat something first. If you need another one later, feel free to come back. I always have some with me for hard times.
Yes, great! Then we can tinker! I have drawn a plan for you. You'd better put it in your pocket right away. First I'll explain it to you and then you can look at it. Let me know when you have understood the plan. In the meantime, I'm nibbling my Schwammerl. Lord in heavens, I almost thought that you had slain a Pascolini while tinkering and dragged him along. Mm -hmm. 
The time has come. Pay attention. I will explain our plan again. When the two guards get really scared, I come out of the bushes with the doll. Our secret word is Mama. When I hear that, I come out. It's sure to get those trousers off those two brainiacs, I tell you. Then hopefully, they will leave right away. And you can go to the bridge and roll the barrel away. And then you can... Uh... What do you actually want? Where do you have to go? Ah! Mrs. Gschwendner! Not G. Schwendner. It's quite simple. You walk through the village on the main road. And you will see the inn straight away. There are a few beer benches in front of it. And the lights are always on. Just an inn. But be careful, there are also guards running around everywhere in the village. You're welcome. We should be on our way now. It was nice to meet you. And please don't tell my father or the guards that you saw me. Otherwise the Pasculinis are the least of my problems, I can tell you that. Wonderful. What you need now is a work. Give me. Did he say Pasqualini? Did I hear that right? Am I crazy? How does he know that? Is he just trying to mess with us? It sounds exactly like the description on the wanted posters. He must have met him. That's not good. Stop! The robbers? Us? I don't know. Ernstel, let's get out of here. I think this is just mad. I don't want to die today. Where should we go? They are everywhere. Over there, down on the right, and then run. Was ist denn das da hinten? Ich glaube, ich habe was gesehen. Hab ich dich!
Hast du das eine von gestern gehört? Was noch? Das ist das vom anderen? Nein, das habe ich nicht gehört. Hast du das nicht gehört? Was ist denn da gewesen? Ich weiß nicht, ich habe es gar nicht gehört. Das, das gehört da auch was. Nein. Nichts, oder? Nein, ich weiß nicht. Ich habe es nicht gehört. Meinst du, meinst du vielleicht... Nein, ich weiß nicht. Was sagst du? Nein, das ist nicht schlecht. You are the gentleman from the city, right? Uh, well, come along. Xofer Gerichtsbachmann. I am the mayor here in town. You are truly sent from heaven. Terrible things are happening here. And at such an inopportune time, just when the village policeman Rup is away, he usually takes care of such things, you know. Now, of all times, things are going haywire here. Everyone is in a tizzy. Such an atrocity in our beautiful village. Well, uh, well, it's easy for you to say. Uh, in the city, such things may be commonplace. It happens there every now and then. But here, with us, in Wolpertshofen, there has never been such a thing. How should one deal with something like that? Everyone is still shocked, I can tell you. A catastrophe that will go down in the village chronicles. You want to know what exactly happened? Well, I, I do not know at all where to start. Everything, yes, everything seems to happen at once. Yesterday, late in the evening, it seems like it almost happened again. Bertel and Ernst, the two almost faced the maker. Good that the two are such brave and smart guys. Uh, otherwise, it would have been over with them. I'm telling you, evil is out there, creeping around the houses. Hatching sinister plans and terrorizing the people here in town. What are you talking about? Oh, uh, of course, everyone here is scared. There's a murderer loose in Wolpertshofen. Just yesterday, we found poor Lenz. Dead, beaten to death, haunted by evil. Oh my, oh my, what shall I do? Ah, the mayor. You have come to an inopportune moment. Schirmeyer is coming to pick up the body of his son. Let's go outside, if you have something to discuss. Uh, no, no, don't, don't let us disturb you. We'll be right back. Mr. Schmidt, you can see what's going on here. Um, Lance is dead, the murderer is at large, the policeman is not here, and the teacher is threatening to start a revolution. Selbstverständlich, Herr Schmidt, selbstverständlich. Gestern Abend, ausgerechnet am Heiligen Sonntag, da hat es einen Streit gegeben. Bei der Geschwindnerkarte im Wirtshaus, da trifft man sich gern noch im Gottesdienst. Ähm, Sie sind auch dort untergebracht, wenn ich mich nicht täusche. Wie gesagt, sind wir hier ein anständiger Ort mit rechtschaffenden Leuten. Aber der junge Leubel stiftet immer wieder Unfrieden mit seinen gespinnerten Ideen. Da ist er mir jedes Mittel recht. An dem Abend hat es mal wieder so eine Diskussion gegeben, die ist ein bisschen hitziger geworden. Ich glaube, die werten Herren haben recht viel Schnaps erwischt, wenn, wenn sie verstehen. 
Jedenfalls sind sich unser lieber Pfarrer Bayerle und der junge Leubel recht angegangen. Es ist ein bisschen persönlich geworden, muss ich sagen. Eigentlich wird dann der Rupp dazwischen gehen. Der ist hier sowas wie der Dorfpolizist. Und jetzt hätten man ihn einmal brauchen und er ist nicht da. Der hält schon immer zum Pfarrer auch. Gar nicht, weil die so viel miteinander zum tun haben. Aber das sind eben beides Männer mit Anstand. Für die zwei lege ich meine Hand ins Feuer. Und der junge Leubel hat einfach Kurur nicht geben wollen. Dann hat sich der Lenz auch noch eingemischt. Das hat ja gerade noch gefällt. Der Schorsch hat es dann so nicht stehen lassen wollen. Der Schorsch ist eigentlich ein Netter. Der hockt da gern in der Wirtschaft. Gestern auf Nacht da, ja. Jedenfalls ist es dann körperlich geworden. So sind die nämlich. Tun immer so intellektuell und am Ende wird na doch mit die Fäuste gesprochen. Also, das, das war jetzt keine Schlägerei oder so. Äh, nicht, dass sie was Falsches denken. Ein bisschen gerangelt haben sie. Eigentlich alles halb so wild. Das war gleich wieder vorbei. Die vernünftigen Leute sind nachher warm. Das hat schon gelangt dann. Andere sind nur blim, haben nur mehr Bier trinken wollen. Der Lenz auch. Und am nächsten Morgen liegt der Lenz dort da drüben in der Pfützen. Und das Geschoss ist groß. Der Leubel rennt da umeinander und beschuldigt Leid. Beruhigt sich gar nicht mehr. Sie, sie müssen mir helfen, sonst gerät das Ganze außer Kontrolle. Gut, ganz gut. Genau so machen wir das. You must be the young man from the city. How inconvenient for you to arrive here just now. We have to admit that all hell is breaking loose. Yesterday, two young men were attacked again. It is difficult to say who is responsible. But what brings you to us in the first place? Can I help you in any way? Of course, under these circumstances anything else would be negligent. I cannot and will not divulge any detail here, but it is clear to me that there was an external influence. Certainly this was not a natural death. Lenz was also a vigorous young man. He didn't just drop dead. Unfortunately I cannot give you any information about that. I was not present. I was in Hintergroßharting that weekend visiting a patient and only returned here the next day. But that was on Sunday when almost all the villagers are in the pub. It shouldn't be a problem to find a witness. Unfortunately... That's right. My name is Schweighöfer Harald. As a doctor, I'm responsible for the whole district. We don't have such high density of doctors here. Fortunately, we have been spared from the cursed cholera that is currently ravaging the country again. Cholera always shows its ugly face when the high lords think they have to play war. Many soldiers in a confined space, unbelievable hygienic conditions, poor supply of food and clean drinking water and nasty injuries. A cholera is happy about that. But what am I talking about here? I don't want to bore you.
I'm glad to hear that. Not everyone is open to the wonders of medicine and technology. Yet today we have many opportunities to educate ourselves. Praise be to God and welcome to our tranquil congregation. What brings you to us? You speak true words, dear Valentin. These are difficult times in which you have joined us. A terrible tragedy has occurred and the community must first find its way back to peace and unity. But can I help you in any way? Dear Valentin, that's a good question. Actually, it was a Sunday like any other. We had a beautiful mass and afterwards, people here like to get together in the pub. I usually join them too and sit with the important decisions makers of the village. Just a normal Sunday. Unfortunately, we also have a few younger members of the community who often go overboard in an unseemly manner in the pub. Unseemly, I tell you. Unfortunately, that was also the case on the Sunday in question. These troublemakers sat about two tables away from us and got louder and louder. Louder and louder until you could hardly hear your own words. Some of them certainly had too much to drink. Well, God bless hops and malt. And so, I was faced with a great responsibility, namely the responsibility to keep the peace in the village as the leader of the spiritual community. Of course, this also includes peace in the inn, especially in the inn. After all the war, we need peace again. My well-meaning but admonishing words, however, were only met with scorn and derision, unreasonable refusal, boorish behavior. By God, you can't call it our dear Shosh could not bear this ungodliness in his heart. The young man was so animated with courage in his attempt to defend me and the church against this boorishness. It was a real delight to look into his shining eyes. Of course, I wanted to calm him down again. Forgive even the guilt he said our Lord Jesus Christ. And then everything happened very quickly. All of a sudden, Shosh was standing at the table of the scoundrels and called them to account. The rudeness with which these louts met him can hardly be put into words. Rudeness, I tell you, dear Valentin. Of course, we did not get involved in this barbary, so we settled our debts with the good Mrs. Kschwentner and went our separate ways. God sees all sins. I prayed for those louts that very night, that the Lord God would forgive their impudences Impudences. Of course, let me know at any time if I can help you, dear Valentin. Now I think I need to smoke my pipe. Of course I don't want to blacken any parishioners, but Mr. Leubel Corbinian, our village teacher, must be mentioned. Must. L-O-I-B-L is how you spell him. He was sitting there with Schweighöfer, Lenz from Schormeyer Farm and Hans Giergel. These troublemakers sat there and spouted their insolence. In the past, there would never have been anything like that. In the past, even young people had respect for the dignity of the church and the office. But these louts don't know anything like that. Respect and decency. Impudent scum! But of course, I will also include these people in my prayers and ask the Lord for forgiveness of their sins. Of course! On my side? You mean, on the side of the community? So the righteous? The general public? The question should rather be, who isn't? You must mean, who was sitting at the table with me that evening? I don't remember exactly. As a representative of the church, I simply sit at the table with the members of the congregation. 
I make no distinction, you know. None. Well, I have already mentioned Schorsch, our faithful soul. Alois was also there, and the mayor, of course. But I could also be mistaken. As I said, I make no distinction. So who are you? Has Chris Bauer already called for support? First they beat Lenz to death and then they shit their pants. That's just like them, conservative assholes. That's exactly what it is. But you really don't look like your strong support. We will not be stopped. We will not be intimidated by these reactionary buggers. Exactly. That's how it is. What does LaSalle say? History is a struggle with misery. And we will take this struggle upon us. Let me give you some advice. Don't get in our way. This can end badly. You better watch out. What can I do for you, Mr. Townsman? About Bayerle? I don't know. His name is Hubertus, Bayerle Hubertus. It's been a few years since he took over the Catholic parish here. You may already know that Miss Oberlechner works for him in the household. To be honest, I don't know what exactly he did before that. I never asked him. But otherwise, he's actually quite a pleasant person. He likes to be in the garden, he has herbs and stuff behind the church. He often sits somewhere and smokes his pipe. He's a quiet man, I'd say. Only some things annoy him. People gossip now and then, of course, because of him and Miss Oberlechner. I don't believe it, but who knows? I'm not there, fortunately. And he can also get quite annoyed with young Leubel. He doesn't like the way he often acts. I understand that, but sometimes he gets a bit worked up. 
But he does his job well, as far as I can tell. Well, he takes care of his congregation and is also concerned when something happens. Well, the priest thing suits him, I would say. What can I do for you, Mr. Townsman? Howdy! Do I know you? Servus, Valentin! I'm the Schorsch! Mr. Schmidt, good day. What can I get you? Because of how things work here with Katy and me, you mean? I'll explain it to you. Shall we sit down for a moment? Katy doesn't like to talk about it. Well, about the whole thing. The inn belonged to her late husband, August. It wasn't a happy marriage, but I don't know much about that either. Sometimes Mother Krentner tells a little something, but she's not really there anymore either. Maybe you've noticed it yourself. In any case, Kati insists on her maiden name again, since August died. Schwentner. August's name was Brauner. He took over the business from his parents and continued it with Kati. And I think Kati also likes doing that here. People like her. Her mushrooms are popular in the whole county and she has a certain assertiveness. No, it's all right with Kati and the inn, but... And I certainly won't tell you anything new. When August was no more, Kati had a problem. Working as a single woman and then also in an inn is difficult enough. Running a shop like that by yourself? We don't even need to think about that. Of course, that was not an option. It takes a man to do it. A woman can't. I had just arrived in Wolpertshofen and spent the first few days here in the inn. At the same point, I sat for a while in the evening. Katja and I got to talking, and in the end, we had an agreement. Outwardly, I run the inn. Kati does the rest. I help her where I can, even with her mother. I have a roof over my head, Kati has support and can keep the business. And the people in the village keep quiet. Most of the time it's more important how things look and not how they actually are. Ouch! I shouldn't have said that. Please don't tell Kati. She'll tear my head off. Ouch! Pinch! I'll end up in Hell's Kitchen. I'd better get back to work before I blab anymore. It was nice, Mr. Schmidt. I'm sure you're busy too. What can I do for you, Mr. Townsman?
No, I don't talk to strangers. Go away. Go away. I don't talk to strangers. Lost before I throw my chamber pot out. Go away. I don't talk to strangers. Get lost before. Go away. I don't talk to strangers. All right, before you get grumpy here. My goodness, the young people. I'm sure the people in the village have told you that I'm the window keeper because I sit at the window all day. I don't mind. I'm just Henriette Maurer. You can see all kinds of things from there. You can take my word for that. People always talk behind my back that I have so much time. That's why I would sit at the window all day. But that is utter nonsense. If there's one thing I don't have much of anymore, it's time. It's not a nice feeling, I tell you, when you know that you're dying now. Well, everyone dies, that's quite clear. But not everyone knows that their days are numbered. But after all, I was allowed to grow old. Whether that's a curse or a blessing, I don't know. And I don't need to know. That's... In God's hands, the priest always says. He is a good man. My, the thing with his housekeeper, Miss Oberlechner. Everyone has a vice. I don't care. He has to discuss that with the Lord. They come to an agreement. He's a good man. Even to Lenz, the victim, he was always friendly. Although he often didn't make himself popular at all. <laughs> The what? Ah, the robbers in the forest. Yes, I've heard that too. It's not nice, but... But I mean, where else am I going where they could find me? I've already noticed that they've put up some of the men at the bridges leading to the village. That's important too, of course. I think the robber's name is Foren somehow. What was that again? Ah, 
Paschini. Like the Kini. Yes, now I remember. They're apparently from Mammendorf or something. And are known everywhere. Because they take everything that isn't nailed down. Everything. They've even taken cows and children. The poor children. Just imagine. So, in any case, they're probably not good people. The Paschinis. They make mushroom hunting no fun anymore. I'm sure you can imagine that. Not that I go looking for anything in the forest. But Kati and Peter, for example, they go to the forest to find mushrooms for their Ramschwammerl. They're good, I tell you. You absolutely have to try them. Not everyone liked him. At the Schormeyer farm, things sometimes go haywire. And the boy, Lenz, God rest his soul, especially liked to act up in the Schwentner Inn. He wasn't exactly averse to alcohol either, if I may say so. Of course, I don't know what exactly happens there. I don't go into the inn anymore. It's too loud for me, and I don't like the way people look at me. It's always busy there, especially on Sundays. What was going on there again? Ah, yes, I remember. I couldn't sleep because my back hurt so much. Then I had to go to the potty again. Then I looked out of the window. There was still a light on in the inn. And that's when I saw Schorsch. He went down the forest path up ahead. He was alone. I think he was pretty drunk. I don't know where he was going at that time of night. I went back to bed. My feet got cold, you know. Yeah, but I really don't know what else was going on there. And now I'm tired too. I need to lie down. Give my best regards to the priest. What can I do for you, Mr. Townsman? You don't have to look far for him. He's sitting over there. What can I... Oh, well, I guess I had something to do there. It's not forbidden. Or is it already forbidden to walk around? Huh? Is it? Can you tell me why I should answer your stupid questions, huh? You just leave me alone now, I suggest. And how about you stop asking questions and focus on the essentials? Or you better make sure you get the hell out of here. But be quick about it. You can also leave the beer. Ja, 
This is Oberlechner. Yes, Renate. A good soul and I cannot stress this enough. An excellent household help. She has been with me for a long time. 12, 13, more than 10 years in any case. Poor Renate hasn't always had it easy either. You know, unfortunately, God took Renate's husband away some time ago. She was left all alone with her boy. In the meantime, of course, Maxel is no longer a boy either. And that's how Mrs. Oberlechner came to me. After all, in the community you have to be there for each other. Renate needed a job and I needed help. And such a household is really no job for us. Isn't it, dear Valentin? The boy, Maxel, soon went to the city. Already experienced a lot, Mrs. Oberlechner and me. Over the years, you also get to know each other better personally when you spend so much time together. On a personal level, you certainly know what I mean. What do you want to insinuate here? Renate, I mean Mrs. Oberlechner and me? For heaven's sake! I can imagine how you come up with such nonsense. The people here in the village are always talking shit about someone. And yet, or precisely because of this, I am grateful every day for being able to hold my guiding hand over the community. Yes, please, Mr. Valentin. Of course, Mr. Valentin. So, you have some information. I think it's good that you're interested in the place and the people, but you've been taken in by a rumor. This is unacceptable. After all, you don't know him. But people just like to gossip. You know, normally not so much happens here. Then you just make something up. But there's really nothing to this story. Some people are just a bit narrow-minded. They just can't imagine that Mr. Bayerle and I have a friendly and respectful relationship. Nothing else. I'm not bothered by that. What's the point? Sometimes the priest gets a bit angry, but I have enough to do. Actually, I should be getting back to work, Mr. Valentin. Yes, please, Mr. Valentin.
What can I do for Was La Pistner. Good day. Is there anything else? He's at the farm. Where else would he be? Is there anything? City dweller thing. What do you want? Do the high lords want to take over the land? Or are you one of those pretzel salsas like the old Fetzo who used to sneak around here and ask stupid questions? Oh, a man of clear words.
I see you're from the city. Rup, Charlotte Rup is my name. What exactly do you do here? The incidents, yes, but I would also like to understand them very much. Ah, then you must have met my husband, Gustl, August Rupp. The fact that we're meeting here suits me very well, to be honest. Please, take me to him for a moment. Yes, yes he was. We went to my sister's house with the children. She always complains that we come so rarely. Maybe you know what it's like. Anyway, August left early because of the thing with Lent. Then they sent for him. They already know that he'll come home as soon as they call him. Maybe it has something to do with my sister. Anyway, he takes his job here in town very seriously, you know. It's terrible what happened to Lent. Excuse me, if I had known that you had just arrived, I would of course not have asked you to take me to my Gustl straight away. How rude of me. Why don't you first arrive here and have a look around? Then you will get to know the village and the people here. We can also walk together for a while, then I'll introduce you right away. I wanted to go to the marketplace anyway. And when we meet my husband on the way, you will also meet your supervisor. And I will find my husband. Two birds with one stone. That would be something. What? What do you mean he's not here? Um, well, as I said, I didn't go with him. But it won't take that long. He should have been back by now. Not that anything happened to him on the way. That makes me feel quite different, Mr. Schmidt, right? Excuse me, I urgently need to speak to Xaver. And Severin, too. No, I don't have a good feeling about this. We'll have to look at the place another time. Excuse me. Children! Children, where are you? Children, we have to go into town quickly. Mr. Schmidt, I'm afraid I don't have any more time. See you later. Friedel, Friedel Güttinger, good day, but just call me Friedel.
That's me. What do you want from me? Whose side are you on? Are you with this murderous traditionalist pack around our mayor? That's spot on. You don't know your way around here, so just stay out of it. We'll sort it out among ourselves. Well, be it as it may, what was your name again? And what do you want in Wolpertshofen? Ah, you know what you want. Well, that's fine with me. Yes, that's right. You were announced. My name is Leubel, Corbinian Leubel. I'm the teacher here in town. However, it might be a bit difficult with your report right now. You have chosen a most inopportune time. It will really be the best if you devote yourself to the good old Schlossbergbräu from Kati until this matter is settled. Last night, an innocent citizen was beaten to death right beneath our eyes. And our fine mayor once again shines through his incompetence. Did he send you? In a neutral position then? That could be an advantage. The mayor and these buffoons were suddenly playing militia for him. Arch-conservative scum. Apart from the fact that he is not allowed to do that at all. If I am not mistaken, only the Ministry of the Interior has the authority to do so. The same Ministry of the Interior that is supposed to have sent you. Do you know about this ridiculous militia? Did you authorize it yourself in the end? So you are one of those. Poor Linz. Linz Glass, the son of the old Schormeyer. They found him dead in the street. Lenz is, was, not weak. He would have known how to defend himself. Someone must have hit him from behind. And everyone keeps their mouths shut. But not us. As LaSalle said, this is the power of speaking out what is. This is the most powerful political means. No one dares to say who the murderer is, but after what happened last night, none of those hangers-on can tell me nothing. Now we have to act. And I'm telling you this for the last time. Do not interfere. Go to the pub and get drunk. We'll soon have this settled and then you can do your work. Maybe that's not a bad idea. But I won't wait forever, I tell you. You are an odd fella. But somehow, I feel I can trust you. I'm counting on you. Find the killer. If I were you, I would first talk to our fine mayor before he pisses himself. Go ahead and tell him that we won't be fooled. Oh yes, there was an argument, a real fight with our fine mayor and his ass kissers. I have only told what injustice prevails everywhere. Because as La Salle said, 
It is and always will be the most revolutionary act to say out loud what is. But they are unresponsive to reasonable arguments. They were just looking for a fight. Ever since we lost the unspeakable war against Prussia, everyone has been looking for an escape goat. And that's what us supposed to be right now. Well, those here in town who think outside the box. Anything that smells of progress is immediately sent packing in this town. Damn Higgs. What kind of question is that? Of course no one is happy about our defeat. Perhaps it was the wrong idea from the start to side with Austria. But you really don't want to side with the Prussians either. We should have just stayed out of it altogether. But at latest when the damn Prussians won at Königgrätz, it was clear to everyone that we were not on the winning side. Well, I wouldn't give a damn if it wasn't for the little men who had to face the music just because they want to play war up there. Since then, the mood hit rock bottom, and instead of calming down, they now seem to have to pick a fight with us. And they can have their fight. We certainly won't back down. Who was present? I was sitting with Schweighöfer, the doctor, Lenz and Hans Giegel. One or two tables away was our pastor Bayerle with Schwarz and Alois. We were chatting away and drinking a beer when the priest started his litany. First the war and now us. We disturb the peace of the village, he said. We are causing trouble and putting nonsense into people's heads. That sort of thing. Schweighöfer simply remarked that the priest had no idea about real life and even less about the war. With the church's money you could really help people, but it looks like nobody wants that. No, he prefers to sit comfortably in his parish and doesn't give a damn about the rest. Bayerle didn't even react to that. He is too good for that, but Trash got really, really angry. He stood up in front of us and shouted about us being sent off. Sent off! How ridiculous! Schweighöfer could only laugh, but Trash didn't like that at all. He grabbed him by his graf on the neck and dragged him out. Lenz went right in between. He and Trash even had a bit of a scuffle. Lenz scored quite well a few times. Very well, in fact. Schwarz quickly let go and the whole route left. Serves them right. To be honest, we really got shit-faced afterwards. We wanted to celebrate this small victory. Around half past ten, we said goodbye in front of the pub. I walked straight home. It's obvious, definitely one of them. They didn't want to take such a defeat lying down. I don't think it was the priest himself. Maybe Alois. But I think Schorsch was lying in the wait for Lenz. He wanted his revenge. Then he just knocked him out somehow. Schorsch could hardly walk anymore. He probably completely underestimated his strength. Something like that can happen. And now he has to be held responsible. But who is going to do it? The policeman is prowling around once again. The mayor is also a crowny of the whole route. So let's put justice in the hand of the people and act ourselves. We are prepared. We will confront George ourselves. And if they try to get in our way, we won't shy away from violence either. I haven't always kept my rifle in good shape for nothing. Poor Lenz. Lenz glass of the Schwermeyer farm. His father owns it. 
Really not a particularly sympathetic fella, said his the father. One wonders how it came about that Lenz was so open-minded. With a father like this, in the past, we didn't have much to do with each other, Lenz and I. But since I came back from Munich, things have changed. We often talked about the world and politics. He was always in favor of a pan-German solution. I never understood that. But still, he was a good friend. And then he lies there, beaten to death in the street. And now laid out on the farm by his insufferable father. Those bloody reactionaries! Yes, he is laid out at his father's at the Schormeyer farm. They have just picked him up. Head west out of the village along the forest path for a quite a while. That's where the farm is. Yeah, you've come to the right place. Do you need something? I can't help you right now. We have to finish our consultation first. You know what's going on here. We have to defend ourselves. Until peace has returned here and we are safe again, I'm afraid I can't do any work. Come back then. the usual. We did a little drinking, a little talking, the usual stuff. Perhaps there was also a bit of an argument. That happens sometimes. One will still be allowed to speak one's mind. What do you want anyway? Do you want to get on my nerves now with your stupid questions? I really don't need that right now. In a fight. It certainly wasn't like that. We just had a bit to sort out. It happens. It's part of the game. Pack fights, pack gets along. That's what they say. My dear, don't get on my nerves with your stupid questions. Are you from the press or what kind of person are you? It doesn't matter, just leave me alone. What can I do for you, Mr. Townsman? Finally, someone who asks questions calmly. All the others are just shouting and accusing each other. These smart lecky cocks with their puffy cums. For me, and please keep this between us, they are all no better or more important than you and me, men. Then they drink a beer, and another beer, and discuss. And when they can no longer talk properly, they start to argue. No one has ever been killed because of that. Poor Lance. He wasn't a model child either, but he didn't deserve that. Such a young man, his whole life ahead of him. Lying there in that puddle, it's hard to believe. Lynn? She married Alois and is now called Fiskner. An unpleasant person. And they didn't have it easy either, all of them. The mother died recently. Tuberculosis. That was bad. Then the old Schaumeyer drank a lot. And there were also arguments on the farm from time to time with the children, I think. Schaumeyer got quite angry and since then it's been quiet again. Well, Ursel got married anyway, but in general they got along well. 
Although the father and the son didn't often agree on ideology, I don't know why I think the death of the mother brought the two of them together again. Poor man. That's a tough one. Wife and son within one year. And her thing with Sensi was only a short time ago. Oh dear, who's going to take over the farm now? That would have all been for Lenz. But Schwamaya is actually a good man. I saw how nicely he played with Wurzel's stepson, Alois Junior. He seems to like him. And I haven't even been out to see him yet. Would you express our condolences to Schwamaya when you go out to the farm, please? Thank you, Mr. Townsman. What can I do for you, Mr. Townsman? Well, Corbinian, a teacher like his father, but Azava is quite different as a person. His father is a loud person, and Corbinian has two little brothers. His father beats them all badly when they were little, but Corbinian got the worst of it, I think. Sometimes you don't wonder why people go a bit wild, right? I've often heard that Corbinian likes to gamble for money, and unfortunately not so successful either. It's well known that he also likes to drink. And he also has a way with women. He would always find one, but he obviously doesn't want to get married yet. Anyway, they sent him to the city to study. His father wanted Corbinian to become a teacher too, but I don't think Old Leubel really likes this idea anymore. At any rate, that's where he met the people from this workers' movement and joined them. Since then, he has been going around quoting this La Salle or whatever his name is. I don't think he knows it himself. In any case, it doesn't always sound right as he says it. He also put up some posters with slogans by this La Salle in the village. Most of them have already been torn down by the militia, but you can certainly still find a few. It doesn't matter, I don't think he's a bad teacher. He brings in a breath of fresh air. Not everyone likes that, of course. The old men in particular are not so receptive to Leubel's ideas. Then there's trouble. He just won't let anyone tell him to shut up. What can I do for you, Mr. Townsman? Yes, you don't know the people here at all. On the other hand, who does, Mr. Schmidt? Who does? Mostly the two groups, if you want to put it that way. I think I need to explain that. Do you have a moment? Well, first of all, I have to say that this is a proper inn. Not that you think anything wrong, Mr. Townsman. But like everywhere else, there are also people here in the village who are a bit more traditional. They want everything to stay the way it is. And of course, there are also those who don't want that. They want something to change. Often, it's mainly the young people. That Sunday, the boys sat together again. Severin, Hans Bürgel. Ah, Dr. Schweighöfer was also there. Poor Lenz and above all Corbinian, young Leubel. Teacher like his father. But otherwise, they have nothing in common, the two of them. They don't get along very well. And they like to discuss their crazy ideas about politics and society and what not. I don't get involved. Other people sometimes say something to them. Mostly the old people. So, Father Bayerle, of course, Alois and Schormeyer, and of course the mayor. Schorsch was also there this time. I don't know why, actually. I don't think he even noticed anymore. Actually, Rup always sits with them, but I think the Rups are visiting family at the moment. And we could have used him right now, the village policeman. Anyway, they were shouting quite a bit that Sunday. They were acting up a lot, if you know what I mean. Probably too much liquor, but you can't say that to these gentlemen. I didn't really notice everything that was going on. There was a lot going on in here. But anyways, at some point, Father Bayerle says to Schweighöfer, the doctor, that he was destroying the village community. He got quite angry and told the priest to shut up. The priest would put church money in his own pocket, while all the other people had to starve and come home crippled from the war. Then Schorsch got quite loud and threatened Schweighöfer that he would kick him out of the inn. As if it was for him to decide. And then Lenz interfered as well. Maybe that was his mistake. He threatened Schorsch that he would show him the way out if he didn't shut up right away. And then Schorsch went after Lenz. He punched Schorsch in the face and before I could do anything, he was actually quiet again. 
a typical case of male hubris, I would say. Then they went home, the old ones. So Schwarmeyer, Alois, and the priest. He muttered something about God rest his soul or something. Maybe it was around nine. The mayor had already gone home. I think the way they behaved was too much, even for him. But again, he didn't pay. Put it on the tab. Always puts it on the tab, the fine mayor. The boys stayed a little longer, even Schorsch. They got along again, at least that's what I thought. Then they all went home, one by one. What can I do for you, Mr. Town? <laughs> What can I do for you, Mr. Townsman? Mr. Schmidt, that's amazing! I don't know what to say! Uh, what, what kind of deal is this? He was skeptical? For once I agree with him. But check the alibi and prove the innocence of Schorsch. That will calm down the teacher. I trustfully place the matter in your hands. I see. That's how we do it. You keep me informed. Is there anything else? The thing is, I've already told you, this is a decent place here. We are decent people. Traditional, loyal to our king and God-fearing. But some people think that's not good enough. They sent Leubel to the city to study. Now he's back with a lot of nonsense in his head and is always causing trouble. Keeps talking nonsense about inequality and revolution. Steers up the people. But we are doing well. He's the least to complain. But Leubel was able to win over Hans Gürgel, Severin, a doctor and Lenz for himself and his crazy ideas. That is tragic. Uh, I'm not a big fan of revolutionary talk, just like our priest Bayerle, but I don't really know who else sees it that way. But I didn't want to get involved. When they started arguing, I went straight home. Too much beer. I really didn't need that at that point. That's, that's why I don't know exactly how it went on. You'll have to talk to the others, please. They'll be at each other's throat soon. I'm telling you, our priest, a good man, is already quite upset. And Leubel just won't give in. You've seen him. I can't even get through to him. No decency. No respect for authority. Please talk to the people before something even worse happens here. Nobody can imagine such a thing.
We need to talk. But Renate, what's wrong with you? You are all upset. It's about this townie, this Schmidt, who's been snooping around here all the time. I'm afraid he, he knows everything. But what makes you think that? The questions he always asks. He knows about Maxel, you see. I'm so worried if this gets out. I'm telling you, he doesn't know anything. Do not let yourself be unsettled. God holds his protective hands over us, Renate. If this gets out, no, I'm, I'm already worried. For you too, Mr. Bayerle. It's all because of us. I'm so sorry. I can't tell you how much. Do not worry about it. Pray. That's all we can do now. What is done, is done. What really annoys me, however, is that the old Maurer has recently apparently also taken part in the village gossip. This is an impertinence. These insinuations. You mean the thing about the affair? Don't get angry, Mr. Beile. Just let people gossip. They always done that. We know that none of it is true. We shouldn't care about what they say. You are right. It's laughable. I wish I could look at the matter with your equanimity. Well, that's not our concern now. Yes, you're right. That reminds me. I still have the money behind the gravestone. I have to get it before someone else finds it. But I'd rather do that after dark. Then there's no one left in the village. And nobody wonders why I'm standing around Karl Oberleitner's grave. Actually, it all started when Maxl, my boy, moved to the city a few years ago. At first, we both thought it was a good idea, that he would find a decent job there, that we wouldn't have to worry. It's not so easy out here, you know. Maxl never complained. And then, Mr. Bayerle had to go into town once, and I went with him. Then we also visited the boy. I was so happy to see him again. But I quickly lost my joy. That's how bad Maxl's been. The work in the factory is dangerous. Six days a week, at least ten hours every day. And then he can't even afford his own room with the money. He shares a room with three others. They even have to share the bed. The priest also seemed quite concerned. He didn't say a word the whole way home. And he wasn't hungry that evening either. And the next day, he made a plan that he had to help the boys. But he doesn't have much money himself. So he thought he would just take a little from the church. He said, after all, it's there to help people in need. And the boys, he said, need it urgently. I think that's generous. But of course, it's not completely legal. We can't let that get out, obviously. Mr. Bayerle would lose his job, and so would I, and I can't imagine what would happen to Maxl. That's why we were so careful. Poor Lenz was one of young Leubel's friends. He also wanted to do something against this injustice. He always said so. He had his faults, but in his heart he was a good boy. He really didn't deserve that. Killed in a puddle. Anyway. Lenz often had to go into town and he played messenger for us. The priest always collected as much money as he could and I put it in an envelope and gave it to Lenz. Always on Sunday, shortly before the end of the service, when everyone is still in church so that no one notices. But this place has eyes and ears everywhere. I should have known that this wouldn't go undetected. The boys were always so happy. They would never have complained but this way they often got something warm to eat and new shoes when the old ones only had holes in them. Look, we would never have done anything to Lenz. We needed him. Now we don't know what to do. I'm so worried.
So we have no more suspects and the killer is still among us, threatening the lives of everyone and intimidating all the progressive thinkers in the village? Schmidt, I'm sure you did everything you could, but this investigation seems to have reached a dead end. In any case, we will not wait for the murderer to find his next victim among the liberal forces of the village. Unless by some miracle you find the culprit, we will be forced to act. We must make our preparations for the worst. This damned reactionary bastards will be brought to justice. Do me a favor and keep your head down until this storm is over.
Servus. What do you want? Oh, my Katty, that's a good one. Such good mushrooms, too. Uh, there's nothing wrong, really nothing. <laughs> well, then, Valentin, come on, sit with me, open the schnapps. <laughs> Let's wash it all down. Uh, what else can we do? Am I all right, Valentin? Do I look like uh, I'm doing well? You don't believe that yourself. People are dropping like flies everywhere. One can only wonder. No, Valentin. I am wondering. I tell you honestly, it hasn't been normal for a long time. All this. But now I'll tell you something, Valentin. Listen. Because I think I'm beginning to understand it all. Listen. Yeah, are you listening? Last night I saw her. By God, I saw her. And that's when I realized what's going on. Uh, it's cursed, Valentin. There's a curse on the farm. It's all cursed. That's how it must be. That's the only explanation. I tell you, Valentin. All this misfortune, it's, it's a curse. We are all cursed. And then we didn't give the poor maid a proper burial. She's hunting the place. She'll never forgive us. Never. Oh, you're doomed. You're powerless. There's nothing I can do. What should I say? This serves us quite right. But... Eh, Valentin, you can talk to people. You are one of these guys. That's what you do all day, walking around, talking to people. Uh, can you talk to the witch in the forest or the priest? I don't know who's in charge there. Uh, maybe you can convince Byerle to give Sensi a proper burial after all. Would you talk to him? And also with Rezi. Surely she can do something. Uh, she knows all about curses. She must put some sort of protection on my farm. Uh, a protection against evil. Help me and I will help you. Uh, otherwise I'm lost. All is lost.
I don't see how that's any of your business. I live out here because no people pass by, because I want my peace and quiet. That goes for you too. Yes, I had a sister. Like I used to have parents and a faith in humanity. Little by little I lost them all. I can't even say what last. It doesn't matter either. Zensi. I miss her every day. Every time I wake up I have to understand again that she will never come to visit me again. As if one could understand something like that. There are things that are too much for the mind. It closes up like a clam. It doesn't believe it. And then you have to experience it again and again every day. Now I'm all alone in the world. I have what nature gives me until one day I become a part of it myself. That's how it has to be one day, yes. Sensi was such a good person. She only meant well. Of course, Sensi was not completely innocent either, but she was much what people made of her. That's the way it is with all of us. She was someone who cared, and she cared about me. She was very warm, had so much love in her. You could see that right away. And now she's gone. And she's not coming back. Not today. And not tomorrow. And never again. How can that be? These people bring bad blood. I can sense that. Those are the Pascolini, says Hans Girgel. They are notorious. I'm sure you've heard of them too. And now they are prowling around here, not stopping at anyone. Just the other day I was picking herbs and they were lying in wait for me. I could feel their hungry eyes. I know them already. So I ran and hid in the forest. Nature protects me. I am safe here. Do I know about curses? I just listen when nature speaks, try to understand what the plants are telling me and feel the energies that surround me. Call it supernatural if you like. Others call it diabolical. Still others speak of ghosts. Some are even afraid. As if it has anything to do with us. As if we humans were worth the trouble. <laughs> no, no. People are not that important. We are not that beautiful and pure. We are indifferent to our environment as soon as we can see a personal advantage. At some point we have ruined everything. Nature, each other, the whole world. Then there will be nothing left of all that and then all the money and all the power won't help us anymore. The earth cannot be forced to live. It doesn't do that for us. It will certainly only be happy to get rid of us again soon. I would be amazed if there is even one soul who has not had a curse placed on them. Some curses are very persistent. They stick to people like tar. I recommend a talisman. I can make you one. It should help protect. This won't take long. Before you ask, I don't want any money. I don't need much of that. What I need is poppies, and not too few of them. Ten plants should be enough. You found some? Thank you. 
Aber jetzt, wo wir vom Saft reden, magst du? Warum saufst du denn du? Da bist du ein bisschen zäh. Ne? Aber das geht schon wieder. Ich meine, ich habe ihn ja aufgehört. Ich verstehe es nicht. Das ist Aber ja. Seit der Volk steht immer noch da. Ja, da habe ich es gelernt. But Valentin, what is there to discuss? Could it be because poor Sensi could not be buried in the consecrated graveyard? Of course, that is tragic. But my hands are tight, dear Valentin. Those who decide to leave the life in this way have no place among their Christian brothers and sisters. The church cannot change the rules just because a few people would like to. Suicide is a grave sin. This mortal sin is so reprehensible that one forfeits the right to purification. You can keep your sacrilegious and pseudo-intellectual views to yourself. That is true, of course, and I would like to fulfill it. My dear Valentin, what the pastor wants to say and what he can say is unfortunately not always written on the same page. I have a responsibility, after all, for all my parishioners. However, it seems to me that you are being heard in the right places Provided there are no complaints from the congregation, there is some room for maneuver within which I could move as a clergyman. I will see to it that Sensi's body is laid to rest in this cemetery today. Sensi, uh, did you talk to the priest? Uh, what did he say? And is Grisbacher playing along? Valentin, that's something. That's amazing. I can't believe it. Sensi, yes, that's only right and proper. Then she can finally find some peace. Ah, maybe I can sleep again tonight. I really owe you. Thank you. What kind of questions are these, and why should I answer any of your questions? 
What do you want? Do you have a fever? If the mayor hadn't sent you, I'd chase you off my farm right now. But if Griesbacher is behind it, I don't want to get in the way. Yeah, but hurry up. I don't have all day. On the evening it happened at Katis pub, he meets his revolutionary friends there every Sunday. They always discuss God and the world. Their ideas are too crazy for me. Where would that get us? But when you're young, you can be a bit crazy. Leubel, our teacher, he was out in the big white world to study in Munich. Since then, he's had all these wild ideas in his head. And his pal Severin, he's always hanging around the school. The good Dr. Schweighöfer thinks he's particularly clever, huh? He was there too. And Hans Girgel, who used to be a farmhand. Unfortunately, there were issues. Lenz and Hans Girgel often disagreed. But when it comes to politics, they seem to stick together. I think Lenz mostly sat with them. But I'm not that interested. About the farm? Uh, what do you want to know? Many come, many go. Just like everywhere else. Of course I like to keep the good ones. Finding decent stuff is really not easy. We also had a death at the farm. What happened with Tensi is really tragic. She took her own life. We found her lens and me. She was hanging back there, in the shed from a beam on a rope. What a terrible thing to happen. Nobody saw it coming. Sometimes I ask myself whether it could have ended differently. I don't know what happened to her then. Schweighöfer picked her up. Say, Doctor, ask him if you want to know anything else. And here, find eyes. Hans Kirgel, a laborer. He also stopped coming recently. What's going on with Hans Kirgel? I don't know. I'm not that close with my employees. And whoever doesn't want to come, I won't run after them. Is that all, or are you going to walk around here all day asking stupid questions and stopping people from working? It's all right. Go on then, but don't touch anything. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Actually, I'm not allowed to. You know, medical confidentiality. Has Shawmaya approved this? By name or what? No! What do you want with that stupid button? Do you want me to sew it on or what? Do I look like a woman? Alright, alright. But I didn't bring my jacket today. It was too warm earlier. You can keep the button if you want. <laughs> what? Where? What do you mean now? Sink. Uh, I don't know now. That doesn't mean anything. What do you want? It's okay, look at them. But what kind of a stupid... do anything to me. I advise you to leave me alone now and sneak back into town. <laughs> First you said I was in a fight? I don't even remember that. That I was also supposed to have been at the scene of the crime? That the lens is lying there, beaten to death? It's all so terrible. I only remember coming here. It was a Sunday. That's when everyone meets at the inn. W what happened next? I just don't remember. I tried to remember, but there's just nothing. I can't find my jacket either. I don't know where it is. It didn't get left behind the cutties. I just don't know anything anymore. Nothing at all. Please, Valentin, tell me what you know. What have I done? Did I really kill Lance? <laughs> 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 
that's it. Valentin, you're such a clever man. Can you please help me find out what I did that night? I need to know what happened. Great, Valentin. Let's do it. Yes, of course. We have to find the jacket. You mean when we're both as full as I was that evening, then I remember again? That's what I call a plan. Let me know when it's ready to go. I'm always up for that. Valentin, this is all for a good cause. Drink into your stupid skull. And then he said to him, what are you looking at? <laughs> you see, looking at because he hit him in the eye with the pitchfork. You see? <laughs> A toast to our King Ludwig II! Long live the King! Cheers, Valentin! In the war against the bloody Prussians, just the grace. No big deal with their bloody tinder pin rifles there. They shot back three times while we were still reloading. Damn bloody Prussians, I tell you. So fast! Now that's what I call speed, Valentin. Nobody's used to that. I tell you, it's all unnatural. I wonder if God wants people to travel on trains like this. I don't believe it. Is that something else? A war like that? You wouldn't wish that on your worst enemy. That's not human, no. You have to give up your humanity. And I'm telling you, Valentin, you won't get your humanity back. And now I know, I certainly took something to drink with me during the night. The bottles must still be lying around somewhere. We have to find them, huh? Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Awesome! So, where was I? 
What can I do for you, Mr. Townsman? Oh, Schmidt, that's a load of my mind. Good work. Hakutzak, but I was afraid of that. We can't let ourselves be intimidated by a couple of strolling revolutionaries. We'll be ready, I can assure you. They'll be in for a surprise. If you still want to contribute to the clarification of the case, you must hurry before it finally breaks here. I must call a meeting of the vigilance immediately. Valentin. If you don't want to interrupt, why do you do it? You're the guy from the city, right? The one walking around asking questions. Short, know him. Whoever told you that, unfortunately, wasn't talking nonsense. What did he do this time? I can imagine he has gaps. He probably doesn't remember anything. Unfortunately, I am not that blessed. What kind of a relationship that is? Not a very decent one, I would say. Or maybe you don't know. No, oh my. Maybe one day. Even a blind man. Yes. Well, George came during the night. Well, he was with me. No one came that night, if you know what I mean. You're right about that. Better than nothing. But that night I was already sick of it, I have to be honest. Men have no idea about some things. It doesn't matter. Let's see if it works anyway. <laughs> That's exactly what George said. I'm sure you're wondering what's the deal with George and me. When it started, he was so romantic. My choice. He said he would marry me if he had the money. Nothing but empty words, I tell you. Only lies and deceit. He often treats me like a... like a whore. Imagine that. Well, in the beginning it was all very different. He made an effort. Once we went for a walk in the forest, down by the river. We were so in love that we didn't even make it home, you know. And once, we even went to Munich together. George had some business there and he took me with him. That was quite an experience. And lately, you won't believe this, he only comes over at night. But now he only shows up in the middle of the night when he's really drunk. Yes, but different. I was already quite angry with him. Because he's always like that with me now, so I said to myself, No, I said to myself, you won't let him in again. I won't stand for that. I'm telling you. And then he put on quite a show outside, throwing stones at my window, shouting over and over again. 
He woke up the entire neighborhood, the drunken fool. Then I opened the window and told him to go away, and he needn't come back. Then there was silence, for the time being. As I lay in bed again, I hear rustling, and a moaning, and a knocking. I thought to myself, what is going on? I look out the window again, and there's Shosh, standing on a ladder. He had flowers in his mouth. He's holding on to the ladder with great difficulty. Everything's shaking. I could already see him fall back over. So I helped him in. He handed me the damn flowers with a drunken grin on his face. He wanted to kiss me too, but I have to tell you, he stank like a whole distillery. I told him he couldn't stay. He had to go home and wanted to push him out the door. He said he had something else with him and pulled a bottle of wine out of the back of his trousers. I put the flowers and the wine on my table and said, I think maybe he's had enough wine and he should leave now. Then I opened the door for him. But he turns around and goes back to the window. I ask him what he's doing. He says I wanted him to walk away. I said, yes, walking, not flying. He says he's only leaving the way he came and is already hanging one leg out the window. Then I grabbed him by the jacket and told him not to be stupid. He'll break his neck drunk as he is. Come back inside, I said. And so he went back inside. And to be honest, at some point, the discussion about whether it was the window or the door was too stupid for me. I was also tired. I told him to lie down and be quiet. He could stay the night. But do you think he would have given up? That womanizer. All the time he was running his cold hands under my nightgown talking rubbish. And all I really wanted was to sleep. When you have a man in your bed already and he tells you things like that, well, sometimes it's urgent. And then I get carried away with the drunken idiot, you see, and nothing works. Nothing at all. Dead in the water, you know. I think the situation made him uncomfortable. He said I should only wait a little while, but after the fourth little while I've had enough to be honest. What an ass, really. And then the night was already over, and the shouting about land started outside. That's when I threw him out and his stupid flowers right after him. No, he left it here, the stupid fool. I'll give it to you right away. I'm Apollonia, by the way. Mm, but Valentin, can I ask you something else about George, because you've already met him? Valentin, you really are something else. I don't believe it. But tell me right away, do I have anything to do with Lance? My dear, now I'm reassured. Honestly, true? Thank you for helping me. I really owe you one. Apollonia? Yes, she's quite a beauty. And she's nice too. She's got an appetite, Valentin. You don't see that very often. That's amazing. Well, I like her. But you know, I can't offer her anything. Things aren't what they used to be. I can hardly sleep anymore. Well, the beer helps, but otherwise... 
When it's suddenly quiet and dark, then I hear them screaming. Suddenly I'm right back in the middle of it again. In the war. Blood everywhere. But I also... No, Valentin. I can't tell you. You know, sometimes I even see them. Sometimes when I wake up, he sits there in my room on the chair and looks at me. But he says nothing. Never. Just looks. He's such a young man. Almost a boy. And the blood everywhere. I almost pee my pants every time. It scares me so much. And maybe I'm losing my mind too. I really don't know. But that's not a clever man. I'm not a clever man anymore. And now, uh, uh, she should find someone better. But somehow she doesn't do that. Once she said she really liked me. So I asked myself if I should say something. I mean, should I tell her about it? Why I can't sleep and all that? <laughs> Hello, Valentin. What brings you here? Really, Valentin? So, what do you think? Oh, my poor Schorsch. It's terrible, all this with the war. One can't imagine what it does to people. But thank you, really, Valentin. You're one of the good ones. But, Valentin, just between you and me, what do you think? Is it all just fun for Schorsch, or is he serious about us? <laughs> Valentin, do you really think so? Yes, it could be something with Schorsch. Oh, thank you, honestly. Then I only have to take care of one other thing, because I'm expecting, but I can't imagine all that right now. Maybe later with Schorsch, but not right now, no. The thing is, I just can't do it now, married or unmarried. Maybe you can't really understand it. Mm, how can I explain this to you? Look, it's not always right to have a child. Often the timing is bad. Sometimes the right time may never come. But I don't know that for myself. I just know that it's not right at the moment. And I have to be able to decide for myself what happens to my body and my life. Don't I? At least that's what I think. That's why I made this decision. Of course I know about the consequences. I'm not that naive. I know many stories of women who have not survived such a decision. The despair, the fear, the pain and the blood. I've seen it myself, Valentin. If that is the price I have to pay, I will do that. I will not be a broken mother who hates her child. And I will not be a bad mother who gave up her child. Before I die in childbirth, I'd rather die in abortion. But, you know, that is not how it has to be. With a doctor, I could survive the operation. He has the necessary means, and he can save me if something goes wrong. But I could never ask him. The whole place would know about it. If you talk to the doctor, no one here would think anything of it. You can help me. You can ask him. You're my best chance. Will you help me, Valentin? Please. Thank you, Valentin. Honestly, your help may save my life. If you don't talk to the doctor, I'd go to Resi in the woods. No one knows how that would end. But if you ask Schweighöfer, then maybe he'll help me. Unfortunately, I have to... Thank you, Valentin.
What is it about? Is she... Oh, that sounds worrying. What is it about and how can I help? Of course, this is an extremely unfortunate situation. As far as I know, however, I have absolutely nothing to do with it. You would think so, yes. So you just come walking down the street and ask me on the public streets in front of everyone's eyes and ears if I can perform an illegal abortion, I should probably give you a thorough examination. You have ideas. And you obviously haven't yet realized that here every bush, every stone knows immediately about everything and everyone. This damned place! Excuse me, please. This is indeed not an easy situation. I can imagine that it puts a strain on her, and I must admit, I think it's good that she is seeking help instead of doing something stupid. Abortion should not be taken lightly. A lot can go wrong. Unfortunately, I only have very limited options here. In the city, it would be completely different. And as I said, it's not legal either. I won't have to explain that to you. I'm taking a big risk by helping you both. I'm risking my own head with this. However, an abortion on your own is almost a death sentence for the young woman. And now that you have told me about the matter, I cannot let her run into misfortune. I should at least fulfill my medical obligation. What kind of doctor would I be if I didn't even try to save at least this one life? Probably not one who deserves his license to practice medicine. Very well. Under the circumstances, I am willing to help you. But it's not for free. If they find out, we will both feel the pinch. Yes, um, unfortunately, that's not enough. Come back when you've got the money. Do you have the money for the treat? Yes, that's enough. Tell Apollonia she can come to my place tomorrow evening around 10 o'clock. But tell her to be careful.
Hallo, Valentin. Really? Valentin, that's a load of my chest. Honestly. What did he say? That's a big load of my chest. I was so afraid, but then maybe everything will go well in the end. I'm sincerely grateful to you for everything, no matter what happens. What can I do for you, Mr. Town? Can you? What evidence do you have for your claim? Ah, I see. And I see that you are a gentleman. Not Mr. Schmidt, but the killer. He is still at large. He is just waiting for the moment to murder one of us. We will not wait until he shows his ugly face. You have a point. Maybe you can achieve more than we can. Feel free to ask around more. I think a thank you is in order. I wrongly suspected Schorsch. And you saved me from making a terrible mistake. We are all workers. Insofar as we only have the will to make ourselves useful in some way to mankind. That's what La Salle says. And you? You seem to be one of us. You should question all those who were involved in the dispute. One of them must have done it. I don't believe that the priest gets his hands dirty himself. Then it could only have been Alois. He has such a short fuse anyway. Totally jaded. He's capable of something like that. Question him. Ask him if he has an alibi. And don't let Ursula keep you away from him. You'll see right away that he has what it takes to be a murderer. The Pfistner farm is located in the south of the village.
I don't understand what you want from me. Are you asking if I've slain Lenz? Who sent you? Leubel the Bettwetter? He's the only one here in town who thinks he's smart enough and at the same time stupid enough to accuse me of such nonsense. He'd better put his books aside and come out onto the field. Then he'll be able to clear his head of his intellectual delusions or whatever it's called. You know what really gets on my nerves? Many fine clothes who want to interfere in the lives of the villagers. I get through the day quite well on my own. I don't need the talk of upheaval. And the Lord said, if you don't feed the donkey, it will run a few more steps. And then it will die. That is not in the book, but perhaps it should be written there. Then the pompous donkey would also consider on whose shoulder he is laying his fine table. to let you tell me when to answer something first pass away how you say that he died a miserable death with his head in the dirt like a mangy dog just as I say I went straight home from the pub and packed the crates for the market with Ursula like every evening the farmer has to get up early in the morning so everything has to be ready in the evening the crates with the stuff for the market groceries that is the crates with the stupid questions have already gone. Or maybe you saw them somewhere, Mr. Investigator. If you're looking for witnesses for your stupid reports, then ask Ursel. She's in the field. Or Friedel, our farmhand. He's at the market. Oh, and Mr. Townsman. Tell me how your investigation turned out. I already hear it from all directions. A farmer in Wolpertshofen did his job. And you figured it out. Respect, Mr. City Dweller. There sure will be a promotion in for you, right? And I'll get lost? Is there a... What do you want from Alois? Yes, of course he did. Alois has to fulfill his duties. Herr Schmidt, and could you tell me something now? What are you doing, sneaking around my farm? Are you looking for something? Well, then look somewhere else. Is there anything else? Can I help to Look, this is not a good time at all. The goods have to come off the stand and I have to make another delivery. What do you say? Do you want to kill me? Listen, I take care of the goods here at the stand and you quickly make the delivery. 
Then I will have my head free afterwards and time for your questions. Because the delivery would be really important now. Very important, so to speak. These 10 eggs have to go to one of the lumberjacks in the forest near Pfistner Farm. They need a good meal for their hard work. They passed by here fully loaded, so they didn't have a hand free. Apparently, they have even lost some of the wood. The best would be to look for the wood that is lying around everywhere. And make sure you don't break any eggs on the way. If even one shell is cracked, the old lady will come with a stick. An unpleasant person. Yes, really? I'm not sure yet. But now you better hurry. The delivery is late anyway. Here are the eggs. Good luck. How can I help today? By God, that's very good. For you, that might only be 10x, but for me, they truly mean the difference on the farm. Alright, I'll stick to my agreements too. Don't worry, now we finally come to your questions. What do you want to know? As it happens, I can, yes. Alois always has to be home early. His wife, Ursula, would never allow the market goods not to be ready in time. Once Alois was at the cemetery, tending the family grave and came home when Ursula already had the crates in the hallway. That was big trouble, I tell you. The way Alois' mood has been for the last few years, I won't even be surprised if he would just beat up someone to death like that. But in the end, there's always Ursula. She already has a firm grip on the fate of the farm. And with that, Alois as well. Yeah.
I can say with a clear conscience that Alois was at home. Was they did now. Yes, Valentin, you're right. I have to get something off my chest. No, not now. I suggest you get back to me when you have clarified Alois' concerns. Of course they were! This is all a load of bollocks! And now, you go back to where you came from, like a good boy, and give a nice greeting from the working people. Will you never stop being a pain in the ass? Oh, yeah, I know that one. Isn't that the button from... Mister, don't bust my balls any longer! You know everything you want to know about me, so leave me alone now! I have no idea where that damn button came from! Have a nice day! How can I help today? I am not quite sure now whether I should really tell you everything. This place carries a burden that not all shoulders are meant to bear. I'm sorry, but I don't want to talk now. How can I help today? What? I was so sure. Then there's really only one left. The priest himself. I don't believe it. But he's been acting so strange lately anyway. Who knows what times have changed. There are forces that would like to have the absolute monarchy back again. Any means will do. Who knows who this quack might have fallen in with. I couldn't imagine it. But you can't rule anything out. It can't hurt if you simply ask what else he did that evening. was handed over to Apollonia for minor repairs. There were a few touch-ups to be done. 
but just go and look at the jacket. Very true, dear Valentin. After all, that was enough excitement for one day, and it was also getting late. Do you suspect me of murder? A deadly sin? You can't be serious. With your pompous speech, you cannot disguise the fact that you suspect me of murder. I remember that. Just ask Renate and leave me alone. She can confirm everything. Mm -hmm. 